But strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. The best is yet to come. We have such a plethora of, of, of creative souls in, in this community. So I love that we're all creating, we're all contributing to all these different people that have different ways of waking up. Houston, we have a problem. We uh, destroyed that technology. People should not be walking around with masks. That stuff is flat. There's your flu. Last year. Here's your flu this year. Literally doesn't even all right, exist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hibbler Effect. Today on the show, musician, you guys know him as conspiracy music guru, Mr. Alex Michael. Thank you for coming on to the Hibbler Effect, Alex. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be asked, mate. And thanks for asking me to do the uh, the level soundtrack, man. It was an honor because, yes. uh, you know, I, I like the other two. And I thought that he's going he's gonna to ask me at some point. He, he better. He better fucking ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but well, no, you I know, did. And I, I'm glad we were introduced. I mean, along the way, you know, I, I knew who you were. I knew of your stuff. And I, I just, I, you know, it was one of those things where I don't I don't really know him. So I just kind of stayed in my lane. But once this new film came out, I'm like, you know what? I need to st- I need to get out of my lane and let me go out and see who else is out here to help this project. And you were so uh, just all about it right away. Whatever, whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it. And my time, my my communication skills were terrible during those moments. So I'm sure you were just kind of sitting on your phone like, is he going to say anything? What's going on? Am I doing something? What, what what should it be about? What's going on? So I apologize for that, man. I was extremely busy, but you you did it. You The turnaround time was so fast and all of a sudden, you just like, here, man, here's the song. Here's a, uh, uh, you gave me a sample of the song, and I was like, whoa! like okay i was like this is gonna be epic man how long did it take you to write the uh the single level with me oh i guess it took me a couple of days really nice. I, and it took many different turns really in, in terms of genre i was going to go for the real heavy sort of metallica sort of style which i love i've got a kind of a, a, a bit of a passion a bit of, i have a bit of a love affair with the heavy guitar i like that stuff but yeah. not everybody does so i kind of backed off in uh, on the shouting too much i tried some different voices and um now the reason i was pestering you is like because i'm a bit of a perfectionist i'm like you know <laughs> where's it going to be used how's it going to be used what kind of vibe do you want blah 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 but you kind of just went just make me something that's not country I was like, well, what, 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 what if i do some drum and bass or some irish folk or so it's like, i'll tell you what and i thought I'll, I'll do i'll do something heavy like heavy ish you know had, had a nice guitar riff to it that a nice chorus and i wanted level with me to be the chorus because that's the title of the film obviously so you nailed it man I, you nailed yeah, it thank you brother once once i got my head around it and i you know i tried some different voices you know it's the same with any song you keep doing it and you keep doing it until you go yes that's it when i get goosebumps i'm like right when it hits me when i'm like yes i'm when i'm really pleased with it then i can go right now you can listen to it because that's the best i can do kind of thing <laughs> hey man we got great feedback um you know, I, I I hear it all. I hear it almost every day since the film came out. Like they love that song. And right. is it on Spotify? Is it on iTunes? It's like, yeah, go get it. Go go go. Listen to it in the car and and share the song. And um, you know, I appreciate it. It's a great track. And yeah, I I was. I'll admit. I'll admit. I I was just like no country. You know, it's not not my thing. Um, it's not my I, thing either. That, that that's the, that's where people <laughs> get confused. People think because I've released the country album that I'm into country. I'm not, I can't stand country. My wife likes it, 
But because of the message that I wanted to get across, like country is a good, com I can't take country seriously. It's a comedic genre, which is why I used it. And it's great for spoken word. And for the kind of thing I was doing, you know, that, that catchy chorus, the fiddle and everything, and this, that stupid voice that goes like, it was just like very childlike, but it was also, if you remove the comedic layer and the music, you throw that aside, then there's some paradigm shattering information that can change your life. And uh, fortunately, a lot of people can do that. But you know, some people would just see it on a comedic level, just you know and a, a country song or whatever but you and i know both that there's way way more to it than that well, yeah i mean you put it out there uh obviously to get the truth out but in terms of adapting um the audience adapting to the style of music you were waking up people with with the lyrics you know so it, it's it it goes hand in hand with music can change the world and music um is something that uh, every almost everyone in the world loves and they receive information from music you know our whole lives we were brainwashed for music right and there's things that we probably say in our day-to-day -day lives that came from music um and we just don't even realize it yet music is very important um, but as you know our music has been demonized along the way um possibly this entire time especially when in terms of frequency the sound uh, that they're producing at the frequency they're producing it I believe it's 432 hertz or something around there. Uh, whatever it is, I know the, the record labels in the world are pushing out a frequency through music that we're not supposed to be resonating with. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, did you know about that frequency shift that they that Hollywood and, and the mainstream has tried to, to throw on us with music and, and alter our frequencies? And are you doing anything with frequencies on your end? Yeah, absolutely. I, in about 2012, I just started getting into conspiracies, 9-11 being the catalyst that got me into it. And me, uh, me being a musician, I don't know, I think I was talking to a spiritual holistic lady and she was talking about frequency manipulation and sent me something on it. And that just just opened Pandora's box. And it's just like, oh, my God. So this has been completely bastardized as well. It's been bastardized on so many levels. We could talk about this for hours. Um, but that when, when I realized the how music has been bastardized, I thought, well, well like, let's make the polar opposite. So yeah. I've actually got an album. Where is it here? Oh, well, I mean, all of my stuff is in 432 hertz. Um, the powers that be, uh, you know, uh, uh, have tuned it to 440. If you look at that cymatically, it's a, it's a real mess. 432. Yeah, that's hertz. what I meant, guys. Sorry, sorry. 440. Yeah, very, very yeah. coherent if you look at it in 432. So I decided to, you know, research the solfeggio healing frequencies and 432 hertz and all that sort of stuff. And I made this album maybe four years ago, which is called True, True Solfeggio. It's all in 432 hertz and it embeds healing frequencies in, in that album as well. And you've only got to look at the uh, the reviews on Amazon to see what that's doing to people. And I, I, I often refer to it as, you know, the music, which is the polar opposite of what the controllers want. You know, it's a nice instrumental calming healing album if you want to get new age about it. And that's what I thought healing frequencies were, new age. But when you do your own experiment, you actually embed these frequencies. So they can't be heard, but they're there. Yep. And then people are having almost spiritual experience with it, with, with, with this kind of, you know, meditative, music so um so i've known about it for a while so which is why i continue and always will put out everything i put out on my channel and everything i release is all in 432 hertz and i but do genuinely believe that it is a uh, a more natural healing frequency yeah it is um glad you mentioned it i i did, is that album on that you have with the frequencies is that on uh, spotify by any chance yeah, it's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on Amazon. Uh, for now, anyway, I've just been told yesterday that CD Baby are no longer producing, ironically, CDs. So I've now got to find another distributor for CDs, which is a pain in the ass. So they're all going digital. That's another bastardization of music, right? You know, because when you go digital, you compress the music into MP3. That rips the soul out of it. But um, anyway, Yeah, I, I, I mean, I fall yeah. asleep to frequencies every night. Every single night of my life, I, I have frequencies playing. What, what I do is I have, and I will go to your album if it's on Spotify and, and add the tracks. Um, because I, every night I have an offline playlist that's built um for sleep and frequencies and i i put my phone in airplane mode and i um start playing the playlist and go to bed and i go right on my grounding mat and i'm grounding all throughout the night and there it is um, yeah no you know, no so i've had i've had lo lots of really good feedback with people saying it does help their sleep i even had one person private message me and said that she's got chickens and when she plays it on the cd player the chickens start sleeping and and and, and 
gathering round the CD player. It's just like animals are tuned to this as well. And I've had people say, oh, my animals are really calm when I put your music on, when no other music will do. Same with their children, same with their pets. Yeah. It's a bizarre thing. I don't know what's happening on a biological cellular level there, but I mean, I, I, I must have sold a few thousand of these and, and I've gauged the feedback and I've got tons of feedback saying it did this, it did that, it did that. It's like, wow, this is, I'm tapping into something here I don't truly understand, but it's magical. It is magical and the, the proof's in the pudding. Um, you know, you, you compare, uh, I, I would say you take a, a room of 100 people and put the, the 440 plus frequency, the Hollywood frequencies in music, and then put a room of 100 people with um, the 432 and see what happens. Uh, that's really the only way to, to prove it, prove it. I mean, I know it's real and I know that I get benefits from it. You've heard the feedback, you know it's real. But in terms of scientifically proving something for someone, probably I had to do some tests like that where you're uh, monitoring 100 people at a time with different frequencies, seeing the results, seeing, you know, maybe doing brain tests, maybe doing stress tests, doing something. But I can almost guarantee that 432 and, and others, there's other frequencies that are great uh, for the hum human mind and body and spirit. But um it would definitely show proof of it i i, I have no doubt about that man um well i've got a bunch of um uh studies on my website conspiracymusicguru.com go to the top you'll see it says 432 hertz click on that and it will take you to studies and it's a bunch of studies done by matthew rife who is the grandson of royal raymond rife you know who did do the frequency machine so he's pretty into frequencies and he's done a bunch of studies and he let he was kind enough to let me have the pdfs and put them on my website so there's the there's some more proof there you know double blind studies that kind of thing so uh, for me it's a slam dunk now you know I, any i don't anyone condoning or 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 supporting the 440 frequency you might as well be supporting the the because the, the rockefeller educational system or the medical system because the 440 was funded by the rockefellers as soon as it's got that name on it that should be reason enough to question it well, like I always say, not everything after 1920 is not in your best interest as a human being. Uh, Rockefeller started the Board of Education in 1920. George Lemaitre started the Big Bang Theory in 1920. 19, the, the 1920s um, was, the, the, for me, it was the turn of everything. The, it was the start of their agenda, their New World Order, their, their big push for it to change our school systems, to control our education systems, to control pretty much everything step by step. And then of course you get to the forties and they start exploring. As we know, Captain Cook couldn't get in by ship, 60,000 miles he traveled around the world. Okay, uh, not the bottom of the ball. That's 12,000 miles at the most guys, 60,000 miles. So the border of our world, and then, as we know, Admiral Byrd stepped in and and went from there. They found so they probably found more land, and and they started to freak out. They started a treaty right away, and then they're like, "Let's make NASA. Let's get some Nazi traders over here and divert everyone's attention to the sky." Um, because Admiral Byrd on live TV said something he shouldn't have said. So it, it, for me, I see this giant timeline between Rockefeller Board of Education all the way through exploration of probably inner inner you know the north and the south was explored they found stuff they didn't want public to know about they wrapped everything that was public so seven continents i'm sure they were praying for only six continents but someone found out about the seventh during that century so they're like fuck okay so seven continents it's all we're going to let people know they're going to wrap it into a ball and push the space program at that point and stop any chance of exploration um <clears throat> i've never really spoke to you about this i don't think at least well, we've been on a couple shows here and there like manny's manny had you know, dave sheffield had a show manny um and stuff like that and i linked with you but what what's your thoughts on more land what what's your thoughts on what's past the 60th parallel to a alex michael what what's past there what, what's your opinion on that boss i mean it is it is speculation station but I love to go there in my mind. I love to speculate. I think it's important to open your mind to these ideas. There's mm -hmm. a reason why they've closed it off. There's a reason why you can't go there. There's a reason why all of these countries signed this treaty, over 200 of them or whatever. There's a reason that they, they can all agree on this specific thing. Isn't that funny? And, you know, Admiral Byrd's comments are obviously very interesting, seeing continents the size of America past the South. It's just like, 
Well, it, it, it does make complete sense. If they put you on a ball, it, it does then become, you know, I don't like to use the word, but it does. It, it's kind of an entrapment. It is kind of a prison. If you're not allowed to go anywhere, you can't go up and you can't go out. Then what is that then? Yeah. You prison. Know? So it, it is a kind of a prison. It's a prison for your mind as well, as well as, as well as physical prison as well. So I would, I mean, look at the North as well. Look at all the old maps of the North Pole with the four continents, Shambhala, you know, uh, or, or the Garden of Eden or whatever Mount you Maru. want to call it. Right, exactly. Or Shambhala or whatever. Yeah, they yeah, no, Shambhala. Hyper, Hyperborea and all these different, different names they were called on so many different maps. And now all of a sudden they get completely wiped off of all, of, of all the, the current map. So there's a question mark right there. So if they're hiding that, what are they hiding in the south and what are they hiding in the north? The north is, is, is such an interest to me. You know, just the Aurora Borealis is just like beckoning you. It's like, you know, there's something divine there, you know, and yeah. even, um, you know, just thinking about Martin Kenny's work there where he was talking about the etymology of like the word compass, come pass, compass. right? In Spain, we say, if you want to come in, we say, pasa, pasa. It means come in, come in. So it's like, come pass, come pass. Yeah, I dropped, I dropped that line in the next level last year when I was talking about the North and how the, the needle, I mean, the compass only points North. And I don't know where this is coming from, but I've been hearing this in the last year, like after the next level came out, there's like these globe channels that come forward and they're like, oh, all compasses point south. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, your compass is pointing north, and the other compass is always pointing south. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh -huh. It's it's the 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 force on my compass is only heading north. Yeah. Of course, the line opposite to north on the compass is south. I'm trying to say that there's no compass that's taking me south that doesn't yeah. uh, do you agree with that because i don't understand what these globe channels are acting like i was retarded in the next level for saying you know no compass points south no compass points out there's no there's no compass i've ever seen that's having this magnetic force that's saying hey go south now that doesn't exist yeah. i don't think i've heard that compasses don't even work in antarctica have you heard that maybe you're, you're yeah, so well, yeah far because you're too yeah, north. you're too far from the from the north you know yeah. It makes perfect sense why yeah. if it doesn't work or barely works at all, you're too far away from the center of the earth. And just the fact that it can work maybe a little bit, you know, maybe not all the way out to Antarctica, but somewhere in between there, that's still pretty far away from the north. So that 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 force in the center of the earth is strong. And I think it's, it's so strong that, that it, it spits out colors. You know, yeah, in the sky. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's, there's something divine there, and isn't it? Isn't it quite ironic that we have this simple mechanical device that could take us somewhere incredibly divine, and no one knows about it? Yep. And so and that's the well, one of them they just follow it. They hijacked it, you know, as they do everything. Um, I'm sure I probably need to go look into this, but I'm sure that the Santa Claus crave uh, craze that came in. You know, the North Pole, Santa Claus, presents, all this stuff. I wouldn't even be surprised if that also started in the 1920s. That's just my opinion. Obviously, yeah. if I if there's no one alive today that grew up in the 1850s, I can ask, do you guys have Christmas with Santa Claus shit? So we have no way to verify it present day. Maybe Dave can ask Ruth what, what was going on with that. Yeah. But I, it's a far-fetched opinion, guys. I'm not claiming that as fact, but... I still wouldn't be shocked if all this came in around the same time because they didn't want just like the South and they're just hush, hush, Emerald bird, kill him, start a treaty. So they kind of covered that. They kind of covered their tracks with the South parallels. Like, dude, no one really, really knows about this. Not many people watch Longine chronoscopes. Like we can bury this and start a treaty and, you know, legally make sure no one even pretends to go where we just went. Um, but with the North, it's like, hmm, is there a treaty in the North? Well, no, not really, but good luck trying to go there. And I, I've looked at people's, you know, they I, I don't know whether they're shills or not, but they're acted like they went to the North Pole and they had the story of their, uh, you know, from A to Z and they got there. And I, and I look at their video or their documents or something and it looks all bullshit to me. It's like, where's your evidence of any of this stuff? So, all Obviously, that stuff is National Geographic, right? It's always usually yeah. a National Geographic documentary that shows these people, you know, that, that, that are taking a lone trip to the North Pole, but yet there's a drone camera following them behind. It's like, oh, come on. But, but people, if you put it on television, people will believe it. So, well, yeah, that's why they this, film, they film this... the way there, Alex. Think about it. They film them going to the North Pole, apparently, and it's frozen and it's, 
you know, they might die any second, right? And it's all on camera. And then the, the documentary is over and they're freezing. Oh, we're at the North Pole now. Yay. And it's their mustache is frozen. And then it fades to black and the credits come. It's like, wait, the, like Dave Weiss always says, isn't that trip getting home as hard as going there? Why can't we watch them going home? Why can't we watch the whole thing? This would be a monumental thing to watch someone actually going to the North Pole. As we both know, they would just lie about their location and say, oh, we're at the North Pole. But I mean, like a real North Pole documentary should be someone documenting point A to point Z and with their compass and going all the way as far as they possibly humanly can. But I think what that I could be wrong. What's your opinion? I think that they'd be stopped along the way. That's just my opinion. I think if someone actually tried to independently do what I just said, that they would be stopped before they reach the center of the earth. I don't really think they're going to allow people. And you don't have to say, oh, well, there's no treaty there. So just fucking go. It's like, no, 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 no. It doesn't have to be a treaty there. It's a very small section of the earth. If you understand that water is flat and level, then they have radar. They could see you a thousand miles away via ship, via aircraft. They know someone's coming in to to enter that north area. What's your opinion on that? How, can we get to the north, or is that restricted as well? I, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there's um, there's a lot of stories, isn't there, that people have gone to the north. You know, back in the day when we didn't have a military presence, maybe when we didn't have that kind of technology. But um, I don't know how God. I mean, we've seen videos. I mean, you put it in your level film where they are actually physically stopped at the South Pole. That that big bloody navy ship comes out and says you know turn around turn around whether that goes on in the north i don't know we will never know unless somebody actually you know funds a, 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 an unmanned drone and just lets it keep flying and keep flying with a with a with a continuous feed i don't know how difficult that is in terms of technology but you know if they're beaming photographs back from mars then it must be possible right? <laughs> yeah right, right. well i'd think... love to see i would love to see some independent travel because the best documentary is not going to come from national geographic it's going to come from us the truth seekers the ones that have got the ball to do this i do believe there's something magical at the north and we really i wish we could get some funding to do some kind of project where we can find the most northern point the most closest point to the north pole and fly something up and just keep going and keep going and just have a look you know it's a good idea though i mean that's you know these ideas are always possible um in terms of the community supporting you know just for instance just this is just an example. This is in, in stone, guys. But let's pretend that um, myself, Alex Michael, let's say Dave Weiss, let's say, you know, Tanner Stewart, there's the Santo Bonacci, all these people, we get all of us lined up. And we get a crowdfunding going and we, we get a hotel booked at the north at the most northern point possible, right? The, the, mm. the closest hotel to what we think the center of the earth is, right? And we all go there and we'd have a strategy beforehand, obviously, but we would try to figure out a way to, to do something, bring some P1000s, um, you know, uh, bring whatever technology we can, who knows by the time this could actually go down, there might be some sort of drone that uh, can go real far. But, you know, as we both know, uh, obviously we haven't been there, but from what I've read, there is a magnetic force there i mean you know i'm pretty sure that drone would be sucked in at some point and we, we might lose all the footage if there really is some magnetic force because that drone would be brought in right away it's why you can't fly in an airplane right at the center of the earth i'm, I'm pretty sure you can't um, well, i'd love to see that on camera the drone just sort of shaking a little bit and then yeah. accelerating really fast all and then a big crash right into a big mount ma 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 and that's what i mountain. mean we We'd have to probably get two drones in terms of, mm. I'm just looking as budget. We'd have to get two, if not three. We need a backup drone for any accidents. Um, and then we would need one drone to go as north as possible, meaning we're going to lose that drone no matter what. Mm. We probably know it's, it's a goner. So we have to keep that in mind. But that backup drone can stay a little behind him. And as he's going towards the north, he might get sucked into the thing. But guess what? Our backup drone is filming that. Is mm -hmm. filming the other drone get sucked in like a magnet or something. And then we got to park that other drone before it got too close to get sucked in, you know? So I, I, I envision this stuff. And I've envisioned this stuff before. There, there, there's got to be a way. I understand that going past the 60th parallel is probably the hardest task we can do because of their radar and their treaty and everything else. It almost seems impossible. For now, it does. There's definitely got to be a way to break that down and figure out a way. Um, but with the North, 
I don't know, man. I, I, every time I think about it, I'm like, there's got to be a way to prove something. There's got to be a way mm. to to even get a drone high enough and far enough from ma- the magnetic force that we could see where the aurora borealis is kind of, you know, deriving from. from. Like, where yeah. where is it coming from? Maybe it, well, to how cool it be if it was coming out of the top of the mountain or something, you know? Yeah. You'd have to do an awful lot of study on, you know, lots and lots of ancient maps and find that tippy top northernmost point and see exactly how far in terms of miles are we talking? Is it from that point to the north? Would it be a thousand miles, 500 miles? And then you've got to consider how much battery life, what sort of drone technology do you want someone, you know, because there are entrances that you can get through apparently by ship. So, you know, you might want to have a team on the ship, but but what we desperately need is funding because we're all curious and we all know there's something magical there. I think it gets more divine the, to, to, the more to the center you go and i think it gets more demonic the further out you go you know the less energy there is the further out you go and i think that's why these so-called parasite these elites so-called uh, have a fascination with the with the south because we've had royalty go there we've had you know astronauts masons pr- politicians presidents you know all these demonic people all have a fascination with the south so i'm wondering if it's more divine in the north and then more demonic as you go further out i've never heard of that now that, that's very possible um, I still look at it as it, there's still a chance and that now my, you and my audience don't have to agree with me and that's fine. These are opinions, but there's still a chance that there are other worlds out there past Antarctica with possible, again, completely speculation, a thousand percent guys, relax, mm. but other worlds with possible other light sources that light their world because it, 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 it's all, it's a fantasy for me, but I could see it though. That's the only thing I can't okay. get over it because I see it. I can feel it. I resonate with it. That that's possible. Yeah. Do we have any evidence of that? No, of course not. But I do want the chance to to be able to go south and see what's over there. Go north and see what's there. Because until then, we can't come up with models. We can't come up with anything uh, besides uh, ancient, you know, Gleason's maps and things like that that they that they charted back then. And obviously, as we know, there's maps with landmass in the center and landmass on the outskirts. So it's like all these different combination of maps. That's why I was just on Sam Tripoli's show yesterday. And I said, I, I don't trust any maps, man. I just don't because some human being sketched that. And there's so many different versions of the same type of sketch with things different, different shapes, different sizes, different locations. Some have way more land on it. Some have no land on it. Some have land in the center, a mountain, no mountain, ice, no ice. It's all over the place. So for me, besides the obvious land masses that we know of, we need to go explore. How do we set that up? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's not an easy task, but there has to be a way. There just has to in the near future. There has to be a way that we can actually figure out a way to go see what's south and what's north. And I agree with you. The north is more important. I do. And I'm yeah, sure I mean, my at audience least, at will least let be us shocked. go. At least you know. At least let us see. At least let us have some independent travel. But um, because that's so restricted, you know, there's a big question mark there. I, I would love to see it in my lifetime. That's really what I would love to see. I would love to see a successful trip to the north in my lifetime, and somebody live streaming it, or if that's even possible, at least bringing back a, an SD card full of what they found. But um, I would love to see that because it's just. It's just a fantasy at this point. It is speculation, but I like you say, I feel it. I know it. It resonates with me so much. I do believe there are other worlds where we're bringing in technology, aliens and all this kind of thing. So um, I I wouldn't say I'm convinced, but I feel it. I think that there's a reason why they shut it all off. So that should be reason enough, shouldn't it? Yes. And, and, and I think it's, it resonates with millions of people, Alex. So the good thing about what you just said is that me and you are not alone in that. There's millions of people and I'm not going to stop this shit until those millions of people that I just mentioned are billions of people. And that's a, also, that's a far-fetched goal. Well, that's my goal. Fuck off. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to bring to the attention, not only is the earth a stationary plane and that the globe is a psyop and that's all bullshit. Okay. But my, my, my main goal in, in my level series and everything I do in terms of flat earth is to bring to the attention of the masses that there's a North Pole center of the earth that we've been lied to about and that there's possible land past the 60th parallel that they won't even let us go check on. And I think once more human beings are aware of those things, you go to outside right now and ask anybody about the North Pole, they might say Santa. 
And you ask anybody about the South Pole and they'll talk about, you know, uh, the bottom Anyways. of the ball. <laughs> and they don't even have a clue uh, what we're trying to resonate with them with the outskirts of the South, 60th parallel. They don't even know what the hell that means. So how do we get it so the masses are at least aware of what we're talking about? Because that's what it's going to take is the masses, the, the, the ones that we are like, oh, you know, the, those are the normies. That the, I get it. But even the normies, even the ones with two masks on right now, uh, walking their dog alone, they still might care about more land possibly and the North Pole being the most magical place in the world and we all want to go there as human beings. There's still going to be a percentage of those normies, as people call them, that do care, that go, you know what? Let me take my mask off real quick. That sounds awesome. Where, how, how do we, what do we do? How do we, how do we go? Oh, uh, uh, this is, you know, mind boggling. There's still, I still give a chance to those people that some of them will care about uh, exploring this stuff and figuring this stuff out. And that might change their paradigm once we, the truth is revealed. But there's millions and millions of uh, people like us, Alex. So I yeah, can't well, That's what we're trying to do, isn't it? That's what we're trying to do. You with your films, me with my music, Dave with yes. his app and all, all loads of other talking heads. We're all, we're all collectively trying to, trying to wake people up. And we're being rather successful at it. You've only got to look at the numbers on Dave's app. And that's just a small percentage of the people that are aware of Flat Earth, the most fringe topic in the world, let alone what's happened in the last three years with the COVID narrative. People, a lot of people, oh, we've got to be a bit careful here because we're on YouTube, but you, but a lot of people are waking up to that as well. So that's really jarred a lot of people into thinking something ain't right here. And as soon as you get that little, that splinter in your mind, as Neo with Ernst and Morpheus would say, as soon as you get that splinter in your mind, it just drives you mad. You're like, there's something fundamentally wrong here. And that's what starts everyone on their journey. And I can see a lot of people, even in my own family that I'd given up hope, they're starting to go, hold on a second. So that could be the start of something incredible in the years to come. Yes, no, I totally agree. And with that, guys, let us go over to Rockfin. I want to talk some big boy talk with Alex. I have never had a chance to do that. Just like last week with Austin, I never had a chance to have big boy talk with Austin Witsit. And we got it on air and everybody, the feedback was great. Um, so let's head over to Rockfin. Thank you all for joining the YouTube version of the preview of this show. Um, all my Rockfin supporters and subscribers, we'll see you there. If not, head over. It's going to be a good uh, rest of the show. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you.